What's up guys, I'm Ira Shell and this is The End Times. We've mentioned the timing of Abaddon a couple times throughout our videos, but there still seems to be some confusion. So let's investigate a little further. Revelation chapter 9 verse 1 through 12. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke, like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given power like the power of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant or any tree, but only those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. In appearance, the locusts were like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were what looked like crowns of gold. Their faces were like human faces, their hair like women's hair, and their teeth like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the noise of their wings was like the noise of many chariots with horses rushing into battle. They have tails and stings like scorpions, and their power to hurt people for five months is in their tails. They have as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek he is called Apollyon. The first woe has passed. Behold, two woes are still to come. John tells us that this is the first of the three woes prophesied over the course of the end times. I want you to notice that the locusts couldn't harm four things, the earth, any green plant, any tree, or those who have the seal of God on their foreheads. We're told who these are who have the seal of God on their foreheads. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 through 4, After this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on earth, or sea, or against any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God, and he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth, and see, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. Now he goes on to name the 12 tribes, except he names Joseph instead of Dan and Ephraim isn't named either, which is trippy, but we're not going to get distracted with that screaming rabbit trail today. No! So the 144,000 were sealed with the seal of the living God. This takes place before the rapture as the next nine verses tell us, which I'm not gonna read in this video. So feel free to pause if you want to, check me on that or check it out later. The other sign of when Abaddon is released is that he is released at the fifth trumpet. This should really be the biggest and most in your face sign. Why? Because there are only seven trumpets and the rapture takes place at the final trumpet. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 through 55. I tell you this brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, the mortal puts on immortality. Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The rapture can't take place at the last trumpet, and then we have seven more trumpets. That just doesn't make any sense. In fact, it's, it's quite contradictory. Here's another sign for when Abaddon will rise. Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 through 8. Then I was given a measuring rod 
like a staff, and I was told, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there, but do not measure the court outside the temple. Leave that out, for it is given over to the nations, and they will trample the holy city for forty-two months. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for twelve hundred and sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone would harm them, fire pours from their mouth and consumes their foes. If anyone would harm them, this is how he is doomed to be killed. They have the power to shut the sky, that no rain may fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they desire. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that rises from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city that symbolically is called Sodom and Egypt, where their Lord was crucified. So he has to rise before the two witnesses are killed. The two witnesses aren't the spirit of God and the truth of God. They aren't the word of God and the Spirit of God. Jesus is the Word of God, John 1. And he will never die again as he is a type of first fruits of the resurrection and has taken on the immortal body we will receive at his second coming, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 through 23. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God does not take physical form ever. That is why he is the Spirit of God. They aren't the stick of Judah in the stick of Ephraim. They are two witnesses, two literal physical people that will be killed and then rise again. They aren't two people born on earth at the proper time. They were seen standing before the Lord from the time of Zechariah the prophet. They aren't even Moses and Elijah. Again, the two witnesses have been standing before the Lord from at least the time of Zechariah the prophet. Moses died. All who died before the resurrection of Jesus went to the realm of the dead, which is called Sheol in the Old Testament and Hades in the New Testament. Psalms 89 verse 47 through 48 and Hosea 13 verse 14. Therefore, Moses cannot be one of the two witnesses. Why? Because Zechariah saw them standing before the Lord in a vision according to Zechariah chapter 4. In fact, let's just take a quick little detour and read that verse real quick. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 11 through 14 says, Then I said to him, What are these two olive trees on the right and the left of the lampstand? And a second time I answered and said to him, What are these two branches of the olive trees which are beside the two golden pipes from which the golden oil is poured out? He said to me, Do you not know what these are? I said, No, my lord. Then he said, These are the two anointed ones who stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Notice how it says, Who stand by the Lord of the whole earth, not who stood, not who will stand but who stand, that is present tense. That means they were standing by the Lord of the whole earth at the time of Zechariah's vision. That excludes anyone who died because all went to the realm of the dead. The only two people who fit this very important, very specific requirement are Enoch and Elijah. Enoch and Elijah didn't die. They were both taken into heaven alive. There was no resurrection. They didn't receive new immortal bodies. They were preserved from mankind for this specific reason. How can we be sure that they haven't received their immortal bodies yet? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 through 38. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. Paul, the greatest apostle who ever lived, clearly states that you have to die first in order to receive the new imperishable body. Therefore, Enoch and Elijah have not received an imperishable, immortal body as of yet. So how could they then have survived all of this time? Well, look at what Jesus said to Peter when Peter brought up John after he was told the kind of death he would die. John chapter 21, verse 20 through 23. 
Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them, the one who also had leaned back against him during the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. So the saying spread abroad among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? According to Jesus, the author of life, Acts chapter 3 verse 15, he can keep anyone from dying and preserve them for as long as he so desires. Some may ask, how then can they see the face of God and live if they don't have their mortal bodies? I want you to notice that it doesn't say anything about them looking at the face of God. It says that they were by the Lord God. They're in His presence. That doesn't mean that they're looking at Him. Just as a seraphim singing before the throne of God in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 through 7 didn't look at the face of God. They kept their faces and their feet covered. For even more evidence on why the two witnesses are Enoch and Elijah, check out our video, The Mystery of the Two Witnesses, which is under our The End Times category or playlist. So, the two witnesses, Enoch and Elijah, will prophesy for 1260 days, clothed in sackcloth, according to verse 3. This will be around three and a half years. They will begin their prophesying during the reign of the beast out of the sea, as it mentions in verse 2 that the court outside the temple will be trampled by the nations for 42 months, which is the exact number of months the beast out of the sea has his throne, power, authority, etc. According to Revelation chapter 13, verse 5, after Abaddon kills the two witnesses, the entire city, including the temple in Jerusalem, is given over to Abaddon, who then establishes Mystery Babylon. Therefore, Abaddon will rise either right before or right after the beast out of the sea's reign has come to a completion. This means that his rise will mark a change in the times. Jesus told us that we have a final sign before the great tribulation takes place. Matthew chapter 24 verse 15 through 28 says, so when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is in their housetop not go down to take what is in his house. And let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And alas for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days. Pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, no, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. So if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. This marked the complete takeover of Jerusalem and the creation of Mystery Babylon recorded in Revelation chapter 17. The abomination of desolation can't stand in the holy place unless the two witnesses are removed as they are in Jerusalem and the temple is still protected because of them. We know the temple is still protected because the worshippers, the temple and the altar hadn't yet been given over to the nations, only the outer courts, according to Revelation chapter 11 verses 1 through 2, which we read earlier. Now Daniel chapter 7 verses 11 through 12 and 23 through 27 explains that Abaddon will be destroyed when Jesus returns for his people, which we went into detail explaining in our video series, The Four Beasts of Daniel chapter 7, which is under our The End Times category or playlist. Therefore, Abaddon will be on the earth from the end of the beast out of the sea's reign to the second coming of Christ, the rapture. Now, because that sounds absolutely terrifying, I want to leave you with a verse of encouragement. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. 
and nothing shall hurt you. So while you guys ponder all of these things, let's sum everything up real quick. A bad end will rise before the second coming of Christ, the rapture of the church. The 144,000 have to be sealed with the seal of God before a bad end rises, which takes place before the rapture. A bad end will rise at the sounding of the fifth trumpet. The second coming of Christ, the rapture, will take place at the sounding of the final trumpet. Therefore, the rapture has to take place after the sounding of the fifth trumpet. The most likely time a bad end will rise is either right before or right after the beast out of the sea's reign has come to a completion. A bad end will be on the earth from the end of the beast out of the sea's reign to the second coming of Christ, which is the rapture. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.